Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's presentation on mental wellness for the Connecticut farming community. I'm here, my name is Tom Steen. I'm uh, from Steen Consulting. I'm a um, mental health professional. I uh, educate people in suicide prevention, postvention, and grief support. And, and I'm pleased and honored to be a participant in today's video. As you can see, we're all a physically distanced and we have our um, mask on because yes, this is during the COVID um, issue that we're all uh, experiencing. So I think timely, this is a really good uh, subject to talk about. So let me introduce Joan Nichols, uh, Executive Director from the Connecticut Farm Bureau. Hi, Joan. Hi, good morning, Tom. And it's so nice to be here with you today. So we're very honored today to uh, be able to provide a series of videos, which we're actually going to feature three farmers here in the state of Connecticut. And I'd like to um, thank the University of Connecticut um, for the funding that they receive to do these important videos to address farmer mental health in the state of Connecticut. And we're also appreciative of the collaborative relationship we have with Connecticut Farm Bureau, the University of Connecticut Cooperative Extension, and the Connecticut Department of Agriculture. And of course, um, our astute expert in this field um, and partner, Tom Steen. So we're uh, very fortunate to be able to do this today. And we feel that this issue of mental wellness for the farming community is, is of a national importance, but it's also critically important to the health of our farmers here in Connecticut. So we're so excited to be able to provide this opportunity today. So Joan, let's talk a little bit about stressful events for farmers. I know you're very involved with farmers throughout Connecticut, so uh, I'm sure you could have a lot to share as you walk around and see the different farmers and what's, what's happening uh, on the ground, if you will. Yep, absolutely, Tom. So my role as Executive Director at Connecticut Farm Bureau is I work directly with farmers. We provide one-on-one -on -one support to our farmer members. We um, advocate and legislate for agriculture in the state of Connecticut. We understand that um, all of us, uh, in our families, in our personal lives, in whatever occupations we're in, at certain times in our lives are gonna experience stressors, uh, some more severe than others. But farming has very unique stressors. Uh, certainly, um, the loss of a farm or a ranch due to foreclosures or mortgages, the ownership of the farm, the heritage that goes along with that farm, the land, the assets, the income that supports has supported that family for sometimes many generations, and the potential loss of that farm for whatever reason is, is often very devastating to a farmer. Health crisis, especially um, anything that's disabling due to an injury, weather. Weather is the bane of any farmer. Good weather is great bad weather is terrible. So they're dealing with crop losses, dealing with weather, machineries, breakdowns, the cost of equipment, cost to repair that equipment, keep it running. Raising livestock has its own stressors because you're not only concerned about the health of the family and, and who's taking care of that livestock, but you also have these four-legged animals that you also have to keep healthy and they're part of how you, you earn your income on the farm. So that can have its own unique stressors. Older farmers nationally um, report higher levels of stress. Um, and, and that I think comes with the, the fact that farming is physically demanding. And as they get older, they can't always do what they used to be able to do. Sometimes they have to relinquish some of those responsibilities to other fi family members. And that loss of the physical ability to be able to do what they used to do it can be hard on all of us, but especially farming when that's how they earn their income. Also reported interesting, more stress from women farmers than, than men. And oftentimes you're, you're either the, the, you're the woman in, on the farm, you're also the farmer. Um, sometimes you're the spouse of the farmer, but you're also raising children. Um, you know, you're oftentimes sometimes a, a partner on the farm. Sometimes you're 
an unintentional partner on the farm. You sort of married into this and, and you know, that could add stress to the family situation, the family dynamics, a marriage. So, and how do you, how do you juggle all of that? That could add stress as well. I would think too, and again, uh, I, I, you're, you're more connected to the farm, but myself as a, a, a mental health uh, professional, I, I, I can see that there might be certain events that might really also trigger um, or, or, or challenge a, a, a farmer and, and certain financial concerns have to be huge. And, and, and you know, and family, I guess farmer, but you know, we, we all have challenges with family and relationships and, and, and certainly conversation and, and is so important and, and, and listening is so important uh, when, it, when it comes to those um, personal and family concerns. And I think uh, really important that, that we learn what those warning signs are. When somebody really is beginning to become challenged with, with all of the events and things that we've just spoke about, uh, that um, we really, um, it, it's things, it's that tools in the toolbox I like to share, um, that, you, uh, that a family member of a farm or, or people in the farm community um, can have so that so they can recognize somebody that might potentially be in trouble and then and then and what you can do about it if, if somebody really is and you know sleeping um stop taking medication is another key sign that somebody is uh, may, maybe potentially becoming more challenged uh, alcohol and drug use and lethal means is really important and you know and you're driving a tractor. I learned how to drive a tractor. That's a scary thing. And boy, if some, you know, and if somebody is really hurting and and um, and and not right, and your gut's saying that certainly safety procedures around um, um, equipment and, and certainly firearms, securing firearms, making sure that limited access to somebody's uh, concern. Um, we, we talk about protective factors when we talk about uh, folks that are um, potentially struggling with their me mental health. And, and some of those protective factors is certainly so, so important to reach out for medical health. Your, your mental health is just as important as your physical health. And, and there are many people out there and the stigma around you know, having to go to a doctor for your mental health is a challenge. It's not only a challenge from our farm community, it's a challenge for everybody. And so being really uh, positive, um, offering a little bit of hope to the person and by just saying, hey, I see you're hurting. What's going on? Talk to me and listen, 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 listen. And then, and then if you're fortunate enough for that, that individual, whether it's the farmer or somebody that's working on the farm, says, yeah, I am struggling. This pressure is really getting to me. Um, offer some help. Say that you'll go with them together to get that help. It's, it's, really, it's really the kind of that message of hope that, oh, oh, finally somebody's sensing that I'm struggling here. This is great. Oh, they're going to help me. So um, a colleague of mine, uh, uh, Willow Lake, who's a registered nurse and also is employed by the Connecticut Department of Agriculture, we were uh, fortunate to go through the QPR training um, a number of years ago um, exclusively to be able to help the farming community. And um, it was an eye-opener for me to be able to have the tools that I need to be able to help any individual, any human being that I am now aware of the signs to look for when somebody is, is in stress or um, I feel they need somebody to talk to. Um, those tools were invaluable, but also being tied into, with the farming community, those other stressors, you know, you go to a farm and, um, you know, you look and maybe the livestock doesn't look like they're being cared for as well as they should. There's some housekeeping going on on the farm that doesn't look like the way it, it should. You know, there's all these other signs that are unique to agriculture. 
But I think the most important thing to, the, the most important message out of this, and Tom, you stress it all the time, is the word hope. There is always hope. And I think that the, the challenge for all of us in the farming community is they're a very proud, very proud group. Um, not always keen about talking about their feelings. And um, I'm going to go back to gender. You know, men don't seem to talk about their feelings as, as openly as women do. Um, but I think the most important thing for all of us that are working with farmers, as well as those of us that live with farmers, the families, is that there are people to help you. And don't be afraid to ask for help. It's not a sign of weakness, it's actually a sign of strength. So um, I'd like to share two points of contact that people can call at any time. One of them is my own personal contact information. So Joan Nichols, Executive Director, Connecticut Farm Bureau. And my cell number is 860-951-2791. Uh, people can call that cell phone anytime. I'm happy to take their calls and, and help them. I'd also like to provide the phone number of my colleague, and we both went through your QPR training, and her name is Willow Lake, and she's also a registered nurse. She brings a lot of uh, wonderful expertise to this program, and her cell number is 860-510-2452. Please call either one of us if you ever need somebody to talk to, um, whether it's you yourself or you have a family member that you're concerned about, call us. We're happy to talk to you and happy to help you get the help you need. You know, just having somebody as a point of contact, Tom, isn't that important? Oh, yes, so, so important. And, and yeah, and I, I know Joan and Willow very well, and I, they, um, um, they've trained. A, a QPR, by the way, stands for Question, Persuade, and Refer which is a, a, a program uh, for folks who are suffering um, maybe with suicide or, or with just, just straight away um, struggles uh, with their mental health. So it's a great program and, uh, and, 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 and these guys are heroes uh, when it comes to that, that training and for the help that you can get. So, you know, let's turn now and, and, and listen to one of our farmers and, and, and do listen to their messages of hope because uh, Folks that are struggling, they feel hopeless and helpless, and th and these farmers have real true message of hope on, on and really truly how to get your and get yourself to the place where your farm can continue to survive um, and provide for all of the people, population, folks here in Connecticut. So um, let's hear from one now. So my name is Paul Varga. Um, I operate Varga Farms, which is currently run as a feed hay production farm in Ashford, Connecticut. I do it with my wife and my two boys. Um, we did do beef for a little while and transitioned to just feed hay about eight or nine years ago. Um, I myself am fifth generation on this farm. Um, it belonged to my mother's side of the family. So my great, great, great grandparents uh, actually purchased it back in 1906. And as a just a, a family farm, and then um, my great grandparents converted it to a poultry operation, and my grandparents converted it to dairy operation, which is where I get my experience on my father's side. Um, he was a dairy farmer, and I actually, uh, interestingly enough, his parents were poultry farmers as well. But he was a dairy farmer. I grew up on a dairy farm. My wife and I, Margaret, purchased this farm from my grandmother in 2006 to keep it in the family and to keep it in agriculture. My family and I, it's, I have two boys, Michael and Jonathan, who help out on the farm. Jonathan is 19, going to college online right now because of the pandemic. And Michael is an international baseball player who is currently home because of the pandemic. So I get a lot of help right now. Um, to make it more interesting. And the reason I got involved in this project is because besides running the farm full-time, I also work a full-time job. Um, I am a corporate pilot for a small corporation who travels internationally for business. So uh, pre-pandemic, I was 
fairly busy flying. Right now it's a little slow, but um, the challenge was to try to keep things moving when I got called to work. Uh, I could get a phone call and have to be gone in two or three hours. So in order to handle that, we would try to uh, look ahead and see what we needed to get done. As a production farm, hay season was the busiest time. So we would try to make plans and have ourselves covered, so to speak. Uh, my boys, obviously, were a big help, um, and they could take over if need be. Um, we also have a neighbor who also does hay production. So if we got in a real bind, we could ask him to help out. Or I have some relatives who are close by, their cousins, who also can operate some of the equipment, and they could help out. Um, and we, we did it quite often um, as, as necessary. Uh, usually it involved unloading hay or raking hay or something to that effect. Um, it, the one part of my job, that w my full-time job, that was very difficult is I could not only disappear for you know, rather quickly, but it could be for an extended period of time. So sometimes the hay in season got a little stressful. <laughs> but um, again, we would look ahead and try to make plans so that we could get what we needed to get done. In the off-season... Uh, deliveries and such. Um, if I'm not home or available, my wife will make the deliveries or my son will make the deliveries. And then we have a lot of people who are pickup, so they come and pick up the, the hay. So then it's just a matter of scheduling and making it work. Um, I let all my customers know that they need to also plan in advance and expect to, to have to be able to make a change if need be, weather, because obviously the weather and also if I'm not home or, uh, or one of my sons isn't available. Um, and most people are pretty good. They understand that when, uh, when we have to make a change rather suddenly. So um, right now, because of the pandemic going on, I've been able to spend a lot more time on the farm but at the same time, we don't know what's happening with work, so it can be a little stressful as well. Um, I think that's how we handle it, though, is we do more work on the farm and, uh, and try to keep things moving forward. One of our driving forces is trying to keep the, the land in agriculture and keep the farm. Um, as I said, I'm fifth generation, so my sons will be sixth generation if they're interested. Um, in I think that one thing that keeps us going is that we want to try and keep that option open for them uh, and, and keep it moving forward. Um, I'd like it to be able to be self-sustaining, but <clears throat> that's rather difficult in the Northeast and the current economic times. You know, on the farm, in a lot of ways on the farm, you're isolated. You, you're working a lot of times by yourself or with your son or with your wife. Um, and maybe, you know, maybe the neighbor or whatever, but you're pretty isolated. And in agriculture, we're all kind of tight knit. We talk to each other, but we don't ever go outside that. We're traveling for work. So I put on a whole nother uniform, quite literally. And then I talk to other people outside of agriculture. So I get to see kind of what other people think and how other people view what we do on the farm. And it's interesting because you get a different perspective, but you also get to vent so to speak to them and and um and maybe explain to them and sometimes when you explain what's going on they may or may not understand it but if you get to talk it out i think that that's a good thing um and also you get to hear stories from them when they don't understand something and i actually find it fun to answer questions um about you know how we do something on the farm whether it's make a bale of hay or milk a cow or or whatever it may be um, so you can explain to them and, and, and maybe they understand a little bit more about how, what we do agriculturally. And then I get to, you know, vent about the weather or whatever, maybe, or an equipment breakdown or something like that. Um, so there's a little bit of conversation and it's not necessarily always with the same group of people or type of people. You know I mean? If you sit down at the table with a bunch of farmers, what do we all talk about? the weather, you know, equipment, taxes. But if you sit down at the table with somebody who's not involved with agriculture, you can complain or talk about those things, but it's a different perspective. One thing I, underst 
I understood growing up as I got older, I guess, was that um, farming isn't just a job. It's kind of a way of life. Like you don't ever leave it. Even when I go to work, when I would travel for work, I have to think about what's going on and plan ahead. Um, so there was a lot of phone calls and coordination. Um, and and I, I'm probably one of the few people who still use a wall calendar and I have about six of them and each one has a different meaning um, so that I can keep things organized um, and, and know what's going on. Um, for instance, one tracks equipment, one tracks deliveries, one tracks pickups, um, and one tracks my regular expenses. And then I bring them all together at certain points and, and, and put it all on paper uh, in one spot. But that's how I kind of handle it is to, to kind of compartmentalize things and then uh, use my neighbors and my wife and, and my kids and to, to help out as best we can and keep things moving forward. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, as we wind down, um, there will be a list of resources uh, that you can certainly um, save or write down so that, uh, for future use if you sh should so need it. Uh, and I wanna thank all the farmers in Connecticut for all you do. You are so, so very important. Thank you.